Okay, documentary film, Ring of Fire, The Life of Emil Griffith. It's a documentary about this very famous welterweight boxing champion. He, he, we start off by finding out about his origins. He was born in the Virgin Islands, part of the uh, Caribbean group of islands. And then as a young boy, uh, moved to New York City and he was spotted by uh, a man, I think a trainer or somebody who was familiar with boxing and he encouraged him to come to the gym uh, but Emil didn't uh, really follow that the guy had a boxing career as a possible for Emil um, but it, he reluctantly uh, started training there and um, there was no boxing involved initially. The man was basically uh, convinced that Emil's physique and movement would be ideal for avoiding blows from an opponent. So they worked on his movement first and later on his ability to punch. Uh, after success uh, as an amateur, he won the Golden Gloves uh, Championship, um, the famous amateur championship in the United States, turned professional, and his, uh, his successes continued. And he was extremely lean and, as I say, very fast. And his uh, ability to exchange punches at ferocity was another quality that he took into the arena. Uh, it then eventually led to uh, an opportunity to fight for the world title against the champion, Benny Kid Parrot. Now, Parrot uh, came out of um, a Spanish island. I uh, can't remember which one it was. Um, and the first fight... Uh, Griffith knocked him out in about eight rounds. Um, he agreed, well, his uh, management agreed to a, a second fight to give Parrot an uh, opportunity. And this one went in favour of the uh, of a Parrot, who won on points. Um, Griffith's camp suggested that it was really his fight, but nevertheless... Uh, a third fight was arranged, and uh, this was the one that tragically led to the death of Parrot following an onslaught of punches. Uh, after a Griffith had been knocked down in the sixth by a, uh, a blow that caught him by surprise, he, he then uh, uh, went on to uh, overcome Parrot and hit him with a barrage of, of punches. Uh, prior to the fight, though, uh, there had been some rather hostile exchanges uh, with Parrot accusing uh, Griffith of being gay. And uh, Parrot, uh, of course, gay gay uh, sports people and gays generally uh, in the early 60s were, were persona non grata. In fact, they were despised and subject to enormous uh, acts of brutality by heterosexual uh, aggressive males and of course in the sporting arena um, he he didn't get any favours uh, from his fellow uh, boxers uh, but it did rile him to the point that he became extremely aggressive in the ring and back through the fight he pummeled uh, Parrot to his head and eventually the the referee Goldstein failed to in, 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 interject to stop the fight um, although it, it all happened pretty quickly and eventually Parrot slumped to his, his uh, to the canvas and uh, was carried out on a stretcher and uh, eventually never regained consciousness and died in a hospital uh, 10 days later from injuries uh, to the uh, head, causing a brain aneurysm. 
Now, of course, a lot of this was pretty uh, unfamiliar, really. Um, boxing was seen very much as a, a sport for poor people, gave them an opportunity, and uh, in the 60s, the late 50s, early 60s, became extremely big business. And a lot of the greats uh, who became champions uh, didn't earn a great deal of money <laughs> uh, because the promoters and the managers took the lion's share. So we then move on uh, to uh, the issues after this. Griffiths continued to fight, but initially he was so wary of taking fighters into the corner and hitting them that he tried to win his fights from the centre of the ring. And uh, this n nearly led to him losing the title. Uh, but he was G'd up by his uh, corner men uh, to uh, start to uh, uh, use his power. And he eventually knocked the guy out. And he continued to fight for a number of years. Um, it also became known uh, that Parrot, prior to his uh, first fight with um, Griffith, had, had taken a tremendous beating from one Gene Former, also a former champion. And it, it's indicated that perhaps by the time he faced Griffith, his uh, injuries, uh, he was already had sustained minor uh, injuries to his uh, skull and brain. And this probably precipitated um, the, the final act in that third fateful uh, fight. We then follow Griffiths uh, and his sexuality becomes a quite a significant aspect to the, his story. Um, he tries to marry a, a girl from the Virgin Islands to try and get back as accepted by the boxing community and the general public. Uh, but he is uh, gay uh, and uh, he uh, he does a, a move up your weight and he won the world title at middleweight by beating another famous boxer that I saw at this time in the 60s, Dick Tiger. And uh, he basically had a long career after that. Eventually, his last fight, and he basically... His attitude was, I'll quit when my trainer tells me that it's time to go. And his famous, his famous trainer, Clancy, I think his name, uh, eventually told him this is going to be your last fight. And he fought the English fighter, Alan Minter, and lost. Um, he tried a little bit of corner work, um, uh, but he then received a vicious beating uh, by a group of thugs who and knew that he had been uh, allegedly uh, labelled a gay man. And he was in his uh, late 50s, and he nearly lost his life. Uh, we also get footage of um, Parrot's widow and later Parrot's son uh, as part of the story. And it eventually leads to an extremely emotional meeting between... Griffith uh, and Parrot's son, who's now become an adult, uh, possibly about 30, 30 years old, 35 years old, because he was only about four when his father was uh, died in the ring. And a very emotional uh, uh, scene. And it's clear that uh, Griffith never fully recovered from... Uh, the, the 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 fight uh, he just didn't intend to kill anybody um, he was just boxing uh, as a, a way of making some money uh, a career and he was he took well he never really recovered from knowing that he was responsible for the final uh, moments in uh, Billy Kid parrot's life um, and uh, it's it was a very emotional uh, uh, roller coaster for me because it, it of course goes back to the early 60s when I was a small boy and then 
uh, his trials with sexuality, uh, you know, brought out some issues for me, although I'm, I'm a heterosexual man, but have, haven't ha actually had uh, a very successful sexual life, really, um, due to anxiety, etc. Uh, so overall, I would thoroughly recommend this uh, documentary, uh, but it's not really for boxing lovers. This is a, a documentary that will uh, lead most of you to believe that boxing should be outlawed. Uh, as a form of a sport because it's an, it's really a reflection of the aggressive uh, society that exists in males uh, throughout the world really uh, but particularly in the United States uh, where boxing uh, particularly uh, after the Second World War became a hugely a huge business uh, with its coverage on uh, national television. So there we are. That's my take on the documentary Ring of Fire, The Life of Emil Griffith. And it was released in 2002.